Hey guys, this is Joy Cho from Oh Joy. Today I'm going to chat about another business topic. So how do you know when it's the right time to hire employees? I started my business in 2005 and it was mostly me for a very long time. Um, it came to a point I think in about 2008, about three years in where I started hiring interns because I had started a stationary line. I just needed some help with people helping me to pack orders and send them out and just some other organizational things. But for the most part, um, I pretty much had my business and it was solely me for about five years. And about five years in, I started getting contributors for my blog, some freelancers here and there, but people weren't working with me in the office. They were working remotely. Um, but to me, the really big change came about three years ago when I decided it really was time to hire full-time or part-time employees in the office working with me. It gets to the point, I think, when you realize that you have so much to do or there are so many things you want to do, but you aren't fully capable of doing them all yourself. I think the one nice thing when you can do everything yourself is that it really is up to you. You have your own schedule, you have your own flexibility. There's no one to be kept responsible or accountable except for you. But at some point, it becomes impossible if you keep growing. And for me, that came after I had my first daughter, Ruby. She was getting a little bit older. Um, it was really hard for me to work from home as she became more and more aware of the fact that I was in the, our home office and I was working and she wanted my attention. And so that um, propelled me to get an outside studio, which has been amazingly helpful. It allows me to go to work for the day, be focused on work, and when I come home, feel much more focused on my family life. And also also, it allowed me to have a space to be able to hire employees and have employees work together without feeling like they were in my home or worrying if my living room was messy or if I hadn't picked up something off the floor. And so um, when I decided to hire employees, it was because we had a lot of large upcoming jobs coming on and I knew that I couldn't do it myself. So I started off slowly. I started off by looking for a couple assistants. I knew, I knew that I needed um, an admin assistant to help with the day-to-day, -to, -day, to help with emails, and to help with just the general business aspects of Ojoy. And also we were starting to do more photo shoots and video shoots. And I need someone to help with production, organizing, as well as the creative aspects of it. So this is how I went about hiring my first two employees. I created a PDF that had a bunch of questions. They were, you know, they were simple things, but things that were important to me, like how do you feel like you fit in with the Ojoy brand? You know, What are your goals? What are you really strong at? What are your weaknesses? And then I also made sure that they had a good grasp of the Ojoy brand. I had them put together um, an image board, a mood board, a Pinterest board, however they wanted to compile about 10 images that to them spoke to what the Ojoy brand represented. And not only with the questions and seeing their answers and giving them a chance to really think about these things, but also seeing their visuals because for my brand, the visuals are so important. I wanted to see what they think the brand is all about and not just pulling images from my blog because that's obvious, but what are some other outside images, colors, textures, patterns, um, photos that they can find from other places that they feel like together and in combination um, embodied the Ojoy brand. So for me, that was a really good way to narrow it down. You know, I think we got a couple hundred applications and we were able to narrow it down to about 10 or so. And I had interviewed for two different spots. Um, we chose the top five people that seemed like the best candidates. And I met them all in person and interviewed them. Now, another thing that I do like to do is a test project. So this can either come at the first interview or at the second interview. But I chose to do it the first interview because I wanted to, once I met with them, I wanted to to see what they were able to do and how they would think about being able to do their job with me at my company. Now this could vary, but I'll give you an example of one thing that I did for the, um, the production assistant position. So I was looking for a production assistant who would help with videos and help with photo shoots and help to organize creative content. And so at the time we were doing a lot of videos called Make Someone Happy and they were sort of DIY videos and different things you could make or give to people. And so I asked the five applicants who I met with to come up with an idea for a Make Someone Happy video. And so what they did is I didn't say exactly what to do with that. I wanted to see how prepared they would come and what they would do. And so I had a variety of, um, 
of responses. I met with five different people. I spaced it apart over the course of two hours at a coffee shop. Um, at the time, I didn't have my own studio, so I didn't want to have people coming to my house. But we met at a coffee shop, and I spaced them apart, half an hour apart, so that I could pretty much within two hours have met with everybody. And that helped to make it really efficient for me. And also that by the end of the day, I kind of would have a better idea of who would be the top candidate. We would talk about some of the normal things, you know, what they were interested in, their past job, job experience, um, what they were looking to do with Ojoy, how they felt like they could grow with the company. But then at the end, you know, we reviewed their homework assignment, the project that I'd given them. And so this was the make someone happy video concept. So some people came with storyboards where they sketched out their ideas and they had the entire video mapped out. Some people came with projects already made. Some people just talked through it or showed me a couple reference images. And then one applicant, Julia, who is who I ended up hiring, actually made a video. She storyboarded it out and took photos of an actual project and the steps to make it and edited it together in a video. Now, this is something that we'll talk a little bit about next, is how to stand out. Um, but. For me, seeing how she put that together, how she thought through the whole process, how she concepted it, and how she delivered a final package really stood out in my mind because I left it up to the applicant to do it however they, however they wanted to. And so it showed me how much effort she would also put into working with me. So after I met with the top five applicants, sometimes there's a clear winner. There's a clear person who stands out, but sometimes it's not quite as easy. Maybe there's a couple people who you really like and you're not really sure because a lot of times people can interview really well, but you don't really know until they work with you how they're going to pan out. So what I've done before, if there's top two contenders, is I would give each one a trial period um, or start with one. Start with one person who I think maybe is the top candidate, but I'm not 100% sure, and we do a two-week trial period. And I send them an email telling them I think they're great, but I'd really like to see how we work one-on-one -on -one together and I have them work on various projects for about two weeks and at that time it was a part-time position so I had someone start for two full days um, for a couple weeks and that was the trial period and so I think it's a really great way to test it out for both you and for them so they know that this is a job that they're interested in and they would want to continue with and also so that you know that they're a good fit. Um, I've had cases before where people are great at interviews and then once they're actually working with me in the office it just doesn't work out so well for whatever reason. So the trial period is really good and then I think after a couple weeks it's a good time if you feel really confident and you feel like this person is getting it, they know what's going on, it feels like a good fit, then you can decide to hire them for part-time, full-time, whichever um, type of timeline that you're, that you're considering. Thanks guys, I love hearing from you. So if you have any other questions you'd like me to address in future videos, please leave them in the comment section below.